Hello everyone and welcome to Whittle Tree Adventures, which is a relaxing little indie platformer. I've played through the game several times and I've unlocked everything. 110% of it. I've unlocked this uh, karate headband. And I've unlocked the three power-up leaves. This one lets us shoot a very short projectile. This orange one lets us shoot a much longer projectile. And this white one lets us shoot a much larger and longer projectile. We're going to be going through the levels in the order that you unlock them. I know it's confusing, but trust me, I know which ones are which. So Whittle Tree Adventures is a 3D platformer, and uh, there's only really two buttons to it. You jump and you swing your leaf. Swinging the leaf is almost entirely optional because the enemies don't really do anything to uh, get in your way. They're very docile. These are berries. Previously we collected them to unlock uh, extra leaves and powers and things. We don't need them now though. This is a water drop and we do need these. We need three of them to complete a level and we need all of them to save the world from thirst. That's our quest. We're trying to save the world from dying of thirst. It's a very important quest for such a little guy. These are the only friendly creatures in the game, and if we hit them, they ask why we're hurting them. With a frowny face, why would we do that? Why would we hurt them? I guess you could say this is kind of a tutorial level. Uh, there's much less platforming in it than the rest of the stages, and it's fairly open. The others require much more harrowing platforming. When I say harrowing, I don't mean, like, incredibly difficult, but just more difficult than this. Probably the most appealing thing about the game is not the gameplay, it's the art style. The game has very simple style of graphics, it's very pretty, uh, goes well with the music, which is all original. I find Whittle Tree Adventures kind of interesting because... A lot of these really pretty games with simple graphics uh, tend to have some sort of really deep thematic significance or some really interesting gimmick to them uh, that makes them unique, more than what meets the eye, if you will. Uh, Whittle Tree Adventures is exactly what meets the eye, to the contrary. It is a very, very, very simple, child-friendly platformer. Uh, probably the most simple 3D platformer ever released. I've, I'm a big fan of 3D platformers, I can't say with absolute certainty, but th this is definitely one of the most simple 3D platformers ever released for sale. It would probably have an early childhood rating if it were released in stores. That was the very first stage. We have six more to go. We gotta travel all over the world. We can't just get the water drops from one. Don't be lazy, Whittle Tree. Yes, here we are. This is the first real stage. It's very windy. Uh, it's definitely one of the prettiest stages, and it's probably my favorite. Uh, the music here is definitely my favorite. This is the first stage where the platforming really starts to come into effect, and the enemies are at least placed uh, in places where they could theoretically hurt you, even though they're never going to do that. You actually have to work for the water drops. I find 3D platformers interesting as a genre, because you have to ask yourself, what am I going to do with that third dimension? I mean, if you're just going to make a 3D platformer that's a 2D platformer but in 3D, what, what's the point, you know? Uh, all 3D platformers seem to answer this in mostly the same way, or at least they used to, and that was with areas to explore with collectibles. These currents of air may seem helpful, but you have to jump at them from just the right angle, or they just drop you down. You have to jump at them from the bottom. I like our uh, karate headbands physics. But uh, Whittle Tree Adventure Adventures is not as non-linear as other 3D platformers. It is extremely linear, uh, but in a very odd way. Uh, it is a lot like old 2D platformers, 
but uh, you must veer off to the left or right constantly to find what you're looking for. None of the collectibles are really optional. You need all three water drops to finish a stage no matter what. But there's still a lot of, you know, branching paths, little tiny areas you could miss. So it is still making use of that third dimension, just in a much simpler way than its other counterparts. I think it's safe to say that uh, Whittle Tree Adventures has a weird place. It's not Crash Bandicoot. It's not entirely railroading you. Not that Crash Bandicoot is bad, I love Crash Bandicoot. But it's not entirely railroading you, and yet it is way more linear than most of the other 3D platformers that ever came out, ever. This developer has only made other two game, uh, shoot, two other games for sale, I believe. Uh, one of them is a game where you see how to commit suicide in any given situation, which is uh, kind of risky to make, I think, but I'd rather it exist than it not exist, and it's not like making fun of anybody. So that's good. It just kind of stuck out to me because it's a, it's a really big contrast with this game. Uh, this game doesn't really have any hidden secret meanings or messages or anything in it. It just is what it is, and it's a, it's a really basic platformer. So it was just kind of odd to see the developer went on to make something uh, quite different. Something I do really enjoy about this game is that each stage has its own aesthetic, has its own little blocks unique to it. It doesn't reuse assets, really. Uh, for example, there's uh, these blue bubble-looking blocks. They look like soap, uh, soap bars to me. These ones we're about to jump onto our left over here. This is the only stage with these shaped blocks and the blocks with these textures on them. And it's just really neat that each stage has its own little, uh, little unique look, its own region, so to speak. You can see right here, this is the hardest platforming so far, and it does make use of full 3D in the most simple way possible, just like I said. Uh, right there, what we just did back there was not possible to do with 2D platforming, uh, but it's probably the most simple use of 3D platforming possible. I just really love the color of these soap bar blocks. I don't know why. They're just really uh, welcoming to me. This is a very relaxing and innocent game. You know, uh, probably the easiest game to space out to. It's also a very short game. Uh, the length of the video you're seeing right now, that's the whole game. Yeah, there, there's, no, there's nothing else after this. Uh, the game's 20 minutes long from beginning to end. So something about this game uh, is that the camera angle is always really close to you, so you need to manually zoom out sometimes, otherwise you'll miss something important, that being a water drop, like way, way back there. I wanted to illustrate how easy it is to miss water drops. Uh, the camera always hovers really close, oops, that's okay, that was for the better. The camera always hovers really close to you, so it's very easy to miss water drops. A lot of people didn't seem to know that you could manually control the camera. You can. You use the mouse for it. A side effect of this, for me at least, seems to be that the mouse cursor is always constantly on the screen. And I try to keep it out of the way, but it's, it's still there. Hovering. Watching. This area is one of only two sections where there's totally 2D platforming, I think. I mean, it makes sense to put this in a little uh, offbeat path. I'm not sure... I mean, it adds variety. I'm not sure what it adds to the overall design, aside from variety, though. It just seems like the developer uh, thought of the most simple, basic ways possible to add variety to the game. There's nothing outlandish or uh, unique about the design, really. It's an exercise in the basics of game design. This is fun. I like this little uh, 
this little bubble tower here, soap bar tower. It's kind of hard, uh, but the controls are actually pretty good. You land where you think you're going to land. The color of these platforms is just so nice to me. I'm not sure why. Uh, you don't want to run before you jump. I said that because, uh, because that happens. Looking at this game from a, a more critical perspective, uh, you, mi you might be kind of scoffing at it. Uh, the game's only 20 minutes long from beginning to end, uh, unless you want to unlock everything, which isn't necessary. But the main story is only 20 minutes long from beginning to end. And it does cost money, it's not free. So you may be thinking that's kind of a ripoff, but it's also only $3. Uh, two ninety nine to be precise. Let's go play with some hexagons. Do you like bees? I kind of like bees. Bees are fun. So when I said that each world had its own aesthetic, I really meant it. Uh, this is the bee level. Everything in the bee level is hexagons. Uh, just a big old world of hexagons. Uh, this game is available on Steam, and a lot of people on Steam don't seem to like it very much. And it's not hard to see why. Uh, it's... It's really, really basic. Uh, like, uh, you, a three-year-old could probably play this basic. I don't think that's necessarily bad, though. I mean, it would be bad if the developer clearly didn't put any effort into it or anything. But even though this does look kind of like a preschool toy box, it's a really nice preschool toy box. I would I would have loved to play with this as a preschooler. I mean, you could try and say that this game is so generic that there's no point to it. But I think that its genericness is actually kind of niche. Uh, now hear me out. There aren't really any just uh, incredibly child-friendly colorful 3D platformers. Even the earliest 3D platformers, they had a, a lot of depth and strategy and challenge to them. Because they weren't really made just for children, or made for casual gamers, so to speak. And when you go about making casual games, you don't really choose 3D platformers as your first option. Uh, you choose puzzle games, point and clicks, just uh, stuff like that. You don't really choose 3D platformers. And there aren't actually a lot of 3D platformers, there are very few. Uh, so few that if you spent more than a day looking at all of the 3D platformers ever made, uh, you would run into Frogger's Great Quest on the second day. Don't look up Frogger's Great Quest. So yeah, it's easy to see why people think this game might just be occupying space, but it is occupying a unique space in the genre. That's not to say there aren't other 3D platformers with simple design. I think Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie have exceedingly simple design. Uh, they're basically amusement parks. The levels in Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie are basically amusement parks with some platforming between the various uh, attractions, so to speak. And I like those games too, I'm just saying that uh, all 3D platformers have kind of a space that they're occupying, and Whittle Tree Adventures is occupying a space that doesn't really exist, or at least uh, didn't yet. <laughs> the closest thing I can think of uh, after much searching are the Dora games for the GameCube and PS2. Uh, those are not really platformers, but they are in 3D, and occasionally you jump, uh, but it's not really platforming. Not really platformer. This game, however, if you've been paying attention, it's, it's a straight-up platformer. The thing you do most is jump, and the jumping gets progressively harder as the game goes on. Uh, by definition, it's a platformer. The jumping in this stage in particular uh, actually kind of difficult. Not so difficult that it should take you more than one try or anything like that, but... 
have to walk on these tiny little beams. Uh, the character only moves in eight directions. You might have noticed that already. Uh, the main title screen recommends that you play with a gamepad. Uh, that's not really necessary. Uh, you can move in eight directions just fine with a keyboard. The placement of this bee is kind of neat. You can't hit it very easily. So you have to move around it. Really the only enemy that's even slightly a threat in this game. And you have to be hugging uh, the inside of that beam to get hit by it. So still not very difficult. I think this is one of the most vertical oriented stages. Where you can see exactly how far, uh, how high up you are. It's a very vertical platformer, not the most vertical platformer, not by a long shot. But that's also something a lot of 3D platformers don't do, is go high up. Uh, the most vertical platformer would probably be Floating Runner, and I recommend you go play that right now. Uh, you can just pause the video and go play Floating Runner. I always liked climbing higher as a means to show progression. It just, it just seemed like a really neat way to do that. All the characters uh, in this game, all the enemies, they look like toys to me. Like things that, like, do you remember when McDonald's had those preschooler Happy Meals for toddlers? They look like toys from that. I think uh, as a child I probably would have tried to chew on them a lot. Especially the turtle. The piano in this stage is just nuts. Alright, it's time for the last level. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think this is the last one. That one with the 600 above it, that's an extra level. We're not gonna touch it. It's not important. Not Just not gonna touch it. Ah, uh, yes. Listen to that music, yes. So even though this is the final level you unlock, I find this to be one of the easiest. Uh, it's also so pretty, though. And the music is also so pretty. Look at how pretty everything is. I'm just going to be quiet for a second. the logs. Uh, the logs fit really well in this kind of wintry stage. It's a really nice choice. So there isn't a lot to this game, but I find it very hard to be mad at a game that uh, pulls stuff like this. I mean, there's not a lot to get hooked on here, but it's, it's not doing anything wrong, really. So if you're like me, and uh, sometimes you're just, you just get sick like eight times in a row, and you can't do your favorite thing ever, which is record video games, because that requires that you pay a whole lot of attention, and you're just so full of snot, and your brain feels kind of fuzzy, there's always Whittle Tree Adventures. Whittle Tree Adventures is the equivalent of chicken noodle soup. That's what it is in video game form. It's not like a whole meal, but it's very warm and makes you feel good inside. And there's nothing scary about it, nothing you have to think about. So as we near the end of the game, I think that's a good way to sum up Whittle Tree Adventures as a whole. It's very simple, very short, but I just... I, I can't get mad at it. it. It does what it tries to do very well. And if you want it, it is $3 on Steam. There's also a demo if you want to replay the first stage over and over, which I did several times before buying it. It did have a lot of bugs. Uh, most of those have been ironed out. Most of the bugs now are graphical glitches, so it's not a big deal.
And that's Whittle Tree Adventures. Uh, it's exactly what you saw and nothing more. So if you want something that is exactly as advertised, exactly how it looks, hey, here's Whittle Tree Adventures. There is going to be a Whittle Tree Adventures 2. I am very curious how that's going to work out, but uh, that's it for this adventure. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you soon.